I'm gonna move on to All Elite Wrestling. Let's jump to Dynamite. From the fifth, I got MJF's return. How about that, huh? That's pretty big. Here's Maxwell Jacob Friedman, supposedly, <laughs> according to some people, the best wrestler in the world. They have the best wrestler here on the secondary show on AEW, so he doesn't main event our show. He's at the end. If we have any extra time for our podcast, we'll talk about AEW. So if he wants to get promoted to like being one of the first things we talk about on the show, he maybe has to go to WWE someday. But for now, here he is. He's back in AEW. He made his return at the pay-per-view. This is his first Dynamite back and his first speech. Basically, that he's back and that he's the number one guy, right? And he goes up and down the card talking about different guys that think they're the top guy now, but he's yeah, going to be... Swerve. Osprey. Yeah. What? Yes. Well, he started with Okada, I think. I got one guy walking around saying he's the Rainmaker. <laughs> Make a lot of money there, H. That's interesting because every time I look at his physique, it seems pretty apparent to me that the guy can't even afford a gym membership. Oh, so he called you know Okada what? pudgy. Okada doesn't work out. That was his first jab what what else? Uh, i think the next guy who said was he was swerving around swerve swerve the world champion so here he is addressing the world champion he was the leader of the mogul embassy hell of a leader pal your entire group turned on you and whooped you but that's not the part that offended me folks it's not the wait hold on a second Vlad, you made a face there didn't the same thing happen to mjf too he had a group uh the, I, the swear, I, 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 said, I said the same thing. I said this as soon as he said, I'm like, dude, the hell are you talking about? That happened to you, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's talking shit about Swerve Strickland getting turned on by his group. He had a group called The Firm for like two, three weeks or something, and they whooped his ass, and he never even gave them a receipt. But okay, that was a weird thing to bring up. I think if he was going to take a shot at Swerve, he should have just said, like, the only reason you're over is because of your manager or something like that. That would have been better because obviously nana is actually just almost as over as sorbent right so. that's not bad flat yes but yeah. he'd mentioned something about if you're a mogul you're a businessman and i think he criticized his english speaking or something he must have so, gone to business school if you're a businessman but yeah you know, yeah I that, don't was know. Was a, that was his was weakest a, insult he went at will osprey too oi i'm the best in the world bro Okay, so he made fun of his accent. <laughs> that kind of writes itself, though. You want to come on my show and lie through those disgusting, British, crooked, yellow-stained teeth of yours? Watch your tone and check your mouth. Because, silly Billy, you ain't the best in the world, bruv. I am! Okay. Well, he goes on to put himself over, talk about his detractors negatively, in general terms. But whose music hit, Vlad, was Roosh to confront basically the best wrestler in the world. This badass guy from Mexico, former Ring of Honor champion. And he murdered he's, a guy he's got, in Mexico. <laughs> he did, yeah, because they, they were held hostage and they murdered all of them. Here's what Roosh said. And yeah, yeah. Most like all these stupid, filthy, ugly Americans, you never ever shut up! <laughs> oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Smelly listen Americans. Me, but listen well, perro. <laughs> oh, oh, this is good, bro. When you've been gone, I've been here working hard, wrestling, winning. You rompiendo mothers, cabron! Ripping mothers. Wait, what is this that translate to? Ripping mothers, I guess. Maybe short for motherfuckers? I don't know. Winning! You rompiendo mothers, cabron! I, I think I, he means he's tearing people apart. Okay. I guess. That <laughs> I makes think more sense what, than, yeah. than you ripping, ripping mothers. mothers. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. You come back and you get a big celebration. Where's my celebration? Where's my big moment? Where's my big moment? I deserve your spot! So now, I'm gonna take it! Because... Here's this catchphrase. You mess with the bull. When you mess with the bull. You get the horn! Okay. <laughs> you get the horn! Listen, <laughs> Oh my god. Well, kayfabe-wise, I like how he stepped up to the man. 
I think it's a little strange booking that Roosh is out here to confront MJF out of nowhere. But okay, I guess Roosh wants to have a prominent role on this show, so they're giving it a shot. But I think this is working here. But MJF has to respond here. And what does he say? First, he said he couldn't hear, so he criticized production on the show said that the elite are in charge now and things haven't been going well in production where he couldn't hear him. I couldn't hear Roosh. Could you guys hear Roosh? I said, could you guys hear Roosh? Roosh, can you run that by us all one more time? I say, we don't give a shit. (laughs) This is not bad, man. This is good wrestling. At least for this opening segment. Count look real dry. You know, dry, Roosh. Like every woman you've ever slept with. Oh my god, that's not bad. You know what? Hold on. I took it too far. I took it way too far. Hear me out. Hear me out, okay? I'm not going to stand here and pretend I don't know you, brother. At one point in time, I paid you an exorbitant amount of money to take out Brian Danielson. I know how talented you are. You come from wrestling royalty. Your father is a Lucha Libre legend. Someone okay. I call you a so Nepo, baby. The thing that they do in AEW where they have to kind of put him over to just to show that this isn't a waste of time, that you've done this, you've done this. Okay, but I'm going to skip a minute of that and get to when he finally says the final insult. I make sure that nothing gets lost in translation. So here goes it. Hey, <clears throat> cabron! Chica tu madre! Oh my god. I know god what that damn. means. I know what that means. You said fuck your mom? <laughs> really? What is Roosh waiting for? Like it took okay, now he hits the ring, but ten seconds he was standing there. MJF drops the mic and they go into a pretty good brawl. It looked pretty good. I think Roosh is a good worker. To me this whole thing worked. I'm gonna skip the line here and I'm gonna give this a thumbs up. Kahan thumbs up for this segment. How about Robert? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. I, I like this All segment. Right. Uh, the only thing is, uh, the very first thought in my head when MJF showed up was, what happened with his scarf? Is he just not wearing it anymore? <laughs> it's on his didn't... back. Okay. No, no. The back I mean, of his it, jacket. The back of his jacket. Yeah, if you see the back of his jacket, okay. it's got that plaid design, like the scarf mm. plaid design. No. I guess that's the remains of the scarf. <laughs> right okay. now, he doesn't have the scarf. You see, there it is. The oh, same that's... design he had on the scarf. It's now in the back of his jacket with a wolf also, because I think he's a lone wolf now. It looks more anyone? like a. That picture looks more like a lion to me, but okay. <laughs> I think he's selling Lone Wolf t shirts on mm-hmm. AEW Shop. That's his new thing. Right. The little yeah. Star of David right there to accentuate yeah. his Jewism or Judaism or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever is right. Anything else, Robert, you, points you want to make? How about Roosh? I thought Roosh was pretty good. Yeah, um, I, I always liked Roosh. So. He's a viable opponent, at least for MJF's first match. So why not? And <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> this yeah. Was pretty funny. yeah, I'm fine with all this. Let me jump to Vlad. Yeah, no, this is not a thumbs up. It's probably somewhere in the middle. It's like, I mean, it's not completely down. It's a, I'll leave it like, eh. It's okay. more indifferent. Okay. And I'll tell you so why. You don't hate it, but you didn't love it. Because it's... Roosh, for God's sakes. Now, now he's, he was said in his promo that he's been ripping ass or whatever the hell you translated for us. <laughs> but where has he been doing this? Because <laughs> I haven't seen him on TV, maybe at all in any of the shows. So I don't yeah, know and we, I actually do keep an eye on Collision and Rampage, too. And you're right. I haven't really seen anything pronounced with him either. Must have been on Ring of Honor, I'm assuming, because there's still the other show left. But yeah, I, I lost track of that show too, man. I tried for a while. But yeah, you're right. Good point. Okay. So that's a little so plot I, hole there. He wasn't being accurate with what he was saying in his promo. So the whole thing that he's a viable opponent for MJF is, I mean, kind of ridiculous. But okay, let's just go with it. Work-wise, it's a good worker and a good talker. Yeah. I mean, is he a good talker? I don't know. You can't... <laughs> Can you say he's a good talker? You could have just said half the yeah. thing. I understood him. But I thought the, he was the, okay. the parts that I do understand. As <laughs> Cornet, as, I mean, I don't want to quote Cornette because though, so, but he did have some great lines when it came to this stuff. He just said that it sounds like the guy has glue in his mouth. 
And when he did the whole, I don't know if you've heard this game, but when he did the whole, the bull and the horns thing, Cornet nailed the accent almost to perfection to the point where I was laughing for five straight minutes, dude. So I, I don't know. I don't know if this is viable, if this is going to be good. Um, everything I've seen for Rouge tells me that it's not going to be good, but I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and give it a chance. But so far, MGF's first like angle back, eh, definitely not feeling this. And this is going to be a problem, I think, for the remainder of his stay with AEW. Like, what the hell are they going to have him doing, dude? They already tried to ruin him last year. Let's see what they come up with now. All right. Well, I like Roosh. I just don't think he's been set up well for this. And I also think he's going to perform well here. And I think he's not going to get a follow up also. But I think skills wise, I think he deserves to be in this type of spot. From what I hear, he's stiff in the ring. That's not my problem. I'm not the one to take the bumps off of him. But I sure. like seeing him personally. And I think his segments have been interesting. They didn't really finish that storyline of his group or whatever, what whatever they were called, La Faccion and Gobernables or whatever. The, Los got, Inca, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's, I, but it's I think weird. what Keon just said was right. <clears throat> That's how yeah, La Faccion right and Gobernables. They were trying to do some storyline with them when Collision first started on TNT. And for a while they had like a vignette every week for them. And then they just, like AEW do so often, just forgot about it. 